The following is an archived podcast presented by the Branston and Hudson Foundation for Podcast Recovery to benefit the Restaurant Workers Community Foundation. This podcast is entitled Boost House Midwest Presents the Quarantine Poetry Slam. It is the first and only episode of the podcast. Welcome to episode one. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Boost House Midwest Poetry Slam. We have a lot of great poets here, and uh, I guess we'll just fuck. Are you going to keep it. talking, or I guess I'll just. You give said it you wanted to talk it. first. Well, I want to introduce it, but I figure we just get it going. All right, so I'm going here. Start with, why don't we start with the poem? Well, should, uh, do I introduce that? I, I feel like I should introduce them. It's You're weird. the one who set this whole thing up. Just read a poem, Jerome. Okay, I will. I'm sorry. Okay, I said I'm sorry. Poem. Can I read my poem? Yes. Okay. This poem is called... I was going to introduce sh- everybody first. This doesn't matter. My name is Jerome Durapois. This poem is called, I'm Shit Too. I'm shit. Yeah, you know that. You can just see it. You can see I'm shit. I am dog shit. I am a sickly little lizard who needs to dry out in the sun. I actually am shit. Yes, it's true. I am a worthless empty catheter bag on the side of the turnpike. I am a psycho, and I am also shit, as you can see. I'm a petri dish dish full of mold and spit, and also I'm shit. Fuck me, am I stupid? Holy good fucking Christ, am I an ugly bastard as well. I make actual shit look like Brooke Shields. When she was young, I mean. (laughs) Don't worry, please. I know I am a brain-dead shithead. I know I'm a bitch, too. You can see that I'm a bitch. I'm sorry. I will shut up. I'm sorry. I know I talk like shit. That's just how how shit talk. I'm going to lay face down outside your door so I can be your first step into a better life without me. I'm the crusty part of your mustard bottle. Okay, yeah, you guessed right. I am shit. That's just how I came out, and that's no excuse. You may feel like shit, but I am shit. Is that it? (sighs) That's it. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and introduce everybody first, rather than going into poems, because that's what I wanted to do. My name is Joseph Rogan, no relation. I am a poet. I am one of two permanent members of Boost House Midwest with my friend Jerome Dupois. And I write poems. Uh, there was an article on me in The Guardian in 2014. Um, not much not much since then. All right. Uh, joined by our, our, our frequent collaborator, Thomas Kincaid Jr. Thomas, how are you? Yes, uh, my name is Thomas Kincaid Jr. I'm a poetpreneur. Uh, my latest chat book is an e chat book. It's called Wherefore Does Winter's Candle Glow? Um, for this one, I was really trying to come up with new ways to market a chat book. Like, you know, we all love chat books. We've all got hundreds of them, but how can we kind of take chat books to the next level? So, this one, I priced it by the kilobyte, the way that writers used to price things by the word. So, it's about $20,000 for a copy. It's a couple megabytes, it's got a lot of JPEGs in it. And I think there's a lot of, you know, really compelling stuff in there. I advise everyone to check it out. All right, we are also joined by Stacy Grinnell. Stacy, how are you? <sighs> Not good. Not good all at right, all. We're also we're also joined by Hut Dooley. Hut, how are you doing? You know, it's just another day living under neoliberal PMC like capitalism. But I'm here with you guys. Uh, I of course uh, I'm a new member of Boost House Midwest. Uh, I am the author of Dialectics Unbound, the Mormon Jewish Tradition and Decolonizing Spaces of the Mormon Body. Initially. And uh, I am a poet and activist, and uh, I'm just honored to be here, maybe you know, spreading some light with y'all in this dark time. All right, thank you. And then uh, we got Brule Wingston. Brule, hello. Hey guys, I'm Brule Wingston, a stand-up comedian, performance essayist, 
and comedy show producer. Um, I was raised in the improv faith. Uh, my parents, Chowder and Fritzy, met at Harvard on improv scholarship, and uh, they dedicated my their lives to uh, teaching the great apes improv comedy. That's wonderful. All right. And then we're last uh, joined by Jeffrey Loner. I need you guys to speak up. You need to get close to your mics or turn up your mics because you're all talking like pussies. We're joined by Jeffrey Loner. Let me just start by saying uh, my years of involuntary solitude have caused me to reach new heights as a poet and transcend some of the norms and traditions that most of you still conform to, like pathetic barnacles on a sunken ship. I have eschewed all metaphor and imagery in favor of the undistilled veracity to feed caustic truths as medicine to the aching belly of the world, pained by a diet of sweet. All of my poems are real and about me, and they have been painstakingly crafted over the last seven years of my life in my Im own imposed exile. Nothing is not true or not about my life. All right, who wants to read the first fucking poem? I read the first fucking poem. Who wants to read the next Joseph, poem? Uh, it's too much yo, yo, pressure. Yo. I just don't uh, even feel good Joseph, about it. I'm, 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 Joe, I'm, I'm, Joe, you go. I okay, no. Go. All right, he's, he's going to be a bitch out. Hut Dooley. No, I want to, like, I want to just clear out the bodies. Let's open up the spaces. I'm happy to kick y'all off. Y'all are some, like, actually very good poets. So I'm happy to, like, get the ball rolling, so to speak. Okay, this is, uh, it's a short poem. This is the title poem from my first chapbook, Dialectics Unbound. It's, of course, called Dialectics Unbound. A space without a body, like a dorm without a pot leaf. Our dialectics are colonized, a flower unpollinized. Imagine a thousand red rifles, all trained red like Bibles. When it's all over, we'll examine the tropes in Fievel. I dream of freedom of every nation. I am John Brown, you are the plantation. And while we're here, I deny allegations. <laughs> That's beautiful, man. That was just a wow. short one. I'm sure y'all have some complete, like, actual fire. That was so, fire. That was fire, man. Thank you. Fire. Thank you, man. Yeah. All right, this one, I'll go next. <laughs> did we say, did we all decide you're going next? This one's called, I Deserve to Be a Movie Star. I am a radical thought. Do you see me? Do you smell that? I'm hot. I got a big one. I'm the man. Yeah? You think so? I'm the man? You think I'm the fucking man? Oh yeah? Because I'm so hot? Because I get all the girls? Because I get all the girls and all the pussy? Yeah, that's why I'm the man? Because I get all the pussy? Is that what being a man is to you? I deserve to get cast in my first ever movie with Scarlett Johansson. And I deserve to be paid more than she gets paid because I'm the man. Oh, I'm the man? I'm not only a hot, but a genius. I have a big fucking brain and I use it to not feel sad all the time. Yeah, that's what I fucking do. That's it. My genius brain has not only rational intelligence, but also emotional intelligence. I always know why women are mad at me. I'm the man. I guess it makes sense, huh? I'm the man. Wrong. I'm a moody, whiny, alcoholic pussy. Guess what, Brainiac? I'm a fucking pussy. I'm stupid. I never know why women are mad at me, even though I have more experience with women being mad at me than anybody else in the entire fucking world. I'm a wimp, a doofus, I'm horny, and I complain about it all the time. Gay guys have called me homophobic slurs before, and when they did, I apologized to them for some reason. I deserve to be a movie star. I deserve an Academy Award for having radical male feelings. I deserve the NBA Finals MVP Award of your heart. I deserve to get a Spike TV's Guy's Choice Award handed to me by Brooke Hogan. I deserve an NAACP Image Award for bravest white boy of all time. I believe that weakness is true strength. And that's why I go out every day and get my ass kicked by a bunch of guys. Because to me, that's what it means to be the man. That was okay. I've heard better. From that was you, pretty Joseph. good, I guess. All right. I thought it was radical vulnerability. I thought it related a lot to me, just like a lot of these other poems. They all sort of just tell my story. Stacey, why don't you read one? <sighs> okay, hold on. I don't feel good. All right. This you one's... need to lay down to read this? You want to lay down? 
That's never, it just never helps. Okay. This one's titled GM. Good morning, lovely lovers. Good morning, friends. Good morning, all. This is for your all. This for you, okay? Wood friends, all friends, have a great, lovely weekend. That was beautiful. Um, wow. I never really thought such like short, simple prose could affect me. That's the first poem in a long time that actually made me tear up. That that poem was uplifting. Well, I'm uh, always tearing up. I don't know if you guys up. would mind if I if I read one next, but um, the positive vibe of that one kind of made me want to share something a little more positive. Brule, bro, you want to read a poem? Oh, uh, absolutely. Since um, Thomas is just going to jump in like that very rudely. Sure, that is quite rude of him, but uh, I appreciate him putting. Thomas thinks he could just leave that. Boost House Midwest and then come back and you know be the leader of everything because he's oh, the leader didn't... everywhere else. No one's paid. Oh, I didn't realize we that. had this problem. We could have sorted this out before we started this poetry stream. I, mean... I wish that someone would just assert themselves. Bro, please oh, read. So I'm, I, I think you read. know. I, you guys, have you guys ever done like um, a self apology circle? No, I haven't. I'm sorry, I haven't done that. So, uh, what it is is like everyone gets in a circle around the boost house, and like y'all, y'all have a great collection of like radically vulnerable men in here. But what you do is you all sit down together, and when you have a problem like you have now with Thomas, um, you all sit down, look at each other in the eyes, and you apologize to yourselves. Something we do out in a uh, uh, Mormon Jewish community in utah i think that's a great idea i'd like to apologize to myself for uh jerome durapois being so mean to i'd like you all to apologize to me i'm apologizing every day for being born bro why don't you read a poem bro why don't you read a poem why don't you read a poem bro i'd love to don't Um, be so shy just read it I've prepared. I can, wait, piece. I can wait all day to read mine, so it's okay. We'll see about that. Just a, a little background about my piece. Um, my view of comedy is that it, I view it as bold storytelling. I don't do jokes. I don't do humor. I, I tell it from the heart. And this piece, entitled In Your Arms, um, is to my parents who are dead. Can you hear me, Mom? Can you hear me, Dad? It's been a while. I hope you're not sad. It's the 10th anniversary of the night we both passed. So I'm visiting your graves to say I've joined the SNL cast. Releasing an album on the label Sub Pop. I'm well on my way to reaching the top. Late night TV isn't out of the question, even though I'm afflicted with anxiety and depression. I guess life is good, mentally. I'm doing quite well, though I still feel my blood run cold at the sound of a bell. Oh, that damn sketch time bell when my siblings would come hooting and swinging, bananas and apples at the sound of that ringing. If they performed well and got laughs from the crowd, they'd clap their crinkled hands, their shrieks were so loud. Some said you were foolish to teach improv to apes, that it was far more advanced than their usual japes. Their brains are too small, their sign language crude. They would only punch down, they'd ruin the mood. (laughs) But you didn't let that stop you, you gave it your best, until the moment your hearts were ripped from your chests. <laughs> there was Mungo the Chimp and Chimp the Macaque, Piero the Gorilla, who led the attack, Tootie the Orangutan, who I trusted most of all, and Frolic the Gibbon, he was the first to fall, in a hail of bullets unleashed by the cops, but they were too late to save my mom and my pops. You taught them well, maybe too well, for they loved using props. They quickly made weapons, out of corn brooms and mops. I don't know why they did it. You gave them nothing but love. That didn't stop the bonobos from raining death from above. (laughs) I can still hear other things too. The timeout buzzer, the splatting of pies, the sounds of your screams as they tore out your eyes, the gnashing of teeth and cracking of bone. Why did you two have to leave me alone? Those arms that held me were the last thing they got, plucked from your torsos. Like, she loves me. She loves me not. (laughs) The experts say apes don't know any better. They don't know right from wrong. The media says they're harmless. 
I hate that bastard Donkey Kong. <laughs> I know how they think. I know how they act. So my beloved parents, with you as witnesses, I make this pact. I will avenge you both and bring ruin to the beasts. Only then will I be able to live in true peace. The terrible fact of the matter is that I want to blow their brain matter all over the side of a circus big top tent. I'll use a gun, I'll use a sword, I'll use my bare hands. I will not rest until the apes are exterminated from these lands. They'll fall into pits of my own design. Pikes covered in shit and my own urine. I'll replace their precious bananas with TNT sticks. I'll bash their skulls in with a sack full of bricks. I'll nail them to cross us. I'll have them drawn and quartered. I'll destroy their stupid nests with RPGs and mortars. I'll wipe them from history and eliminate their curse. I'll send them off cliffs in the back of a hearse. I've planned my revenge. I've stayed safe from harm. By keeping my arms in my shirt, where they're nearby and warm. <laughs> with my arms tucked inside, I can hug myself too. Sometimes I'm bullied for it, but they don't have a clue. They won't take my arms, not like they did yours. They may have won the battle, but I'll win the war. Maybe now with my Netflix deal, I can come out of my shell. I can finally escape this ape-imposed hell. I'm bearing my soul as I'm bearing my arms. I'll never again fall for Coco's sign language and charms. I'm no longer afraid. I can admit who I am. I like to beat fucking monkey and kill them. <laughs> oh I can see that was it. powerful. That Similar. was powerful, bro. In our quest <laughs> through truth and your your Susian esque rhymes have really delivered that verisimilitude. Jeffrey, truly why don't you inspiration read us a poem? to. Excuse me. Why don't you read us a poem, Jeffrey? Uh, my, yeah, then I'll do not. Hey, what about me? I can't help but notice everyone else read one. Such Jeffrey, a turbulent bunch you, you all. Read one, right? You read like two already, right? I don't remember that. Well, Jeffrey, we please. Absolutely. Please. please be quiet. Please be quiet. I will not tell you the name of my poem until after I read it. The night is cold. My heart is black. The fire has seen None watch my back. Anti-hero. In times like this, I have two friends. Judgment and salvation which are my gold-trimmed obsidian cougar magnums. I turn to a target and my friends unload. I blast and blast until my friends give me warmth. I am the lonely anti-hero. The name of the poem is The Lonely Anti-Hero. <laughs> <laughs> wow, thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, Thomas, since you want to be such a diva, why don't you go? Yeah, it seems like everyone is really speaking their truth. Uh, and I appreciate that from all of my friends. But um, I wanted to read something a little more fantastical. In these trying times, it helps to kind of get outside of ourselves and think about other worlds. Why don't you just read worlds. the poem, Thomas? Well, I got to set the scene. This isn't just happening, you know, in the real world. This isn't like, you know, people are... I guess the poem can't speak for itself. Okay, look. This, this one is called The Enchanted Magical Forest. It's more of a prose poem, too, so it, it doesn't poem, really rhyme. Thomas, would you say right. it's pastoralist? Thomas. All right. I'm going to kill you, Thomas. I would say it's pastoralist. Thank you for asking Thank me. You. Yes. I, think you, I okay. think you have a lot of beauty inside you, and I think you should let that flower bloom. Well, I'm finding out who my real friends are. Thank you. I want to roll you um, up in a rug and put you in the ocean. <laughs> okay. I would this help you with that called... endeavor. Okay, well, I guess I don't have any real friends. Can I read? Read the poem! Be who you are. Okay, this one's called The Enchanted Magical Forest. In the dense thickets of the magical enchanted forest, there glow radiant glow bugs and mystical owls and all kinds of fantastical things. In the magical forest, one never knows what wizardry one might wander across, what incredible delights or chilling surprises might lurk behind a giant oak or a very big magical mushroom. Not the drug kind, but one that's crazy colors and shit like you might see if you had taken the drug kind. <laughs> In these enchanted woods of wonder, underneath the shade of the towering pine trees planted by a wizard, there lived two dogs. One was a girl dog. The other one was a boy dog. There was not much to see here, really. They were just two ordinary dogs. The kind you might see on a porch somewhere, as the owner sits in his rocking chair, and the dog just kind of lies limp there in the summer sun with a wrinkled brow. 
Yes, these were just two dogs, brown ones. One day, a wizard walked by. He said, what's this, some dogs? Perhaps magical dogs? He looked at the dogs as, as if they might respond, but they were just normal dogs. They couldn't say anything or get what he was saying. They just sat there. The wizard spoke again. Do you dogs do anything? Are you magical? The dogs did absolutely nothing. It's possible they moved less than even a normal dog would. They're just being absolute shit and boring as hell. Oh, this is no good, said the wizard. He lamented, as a wizard often laments, a thing that is not sufficiently magical. If these were magic dogs, I would give them a home in my fanciful tower filled with wonderful magical gadgets, where mishaps often lead to misadventures, and all manner of colorful characters pop in and out. There's never a dull moment in my magical tower. However, these are ordinary dogs. I already have a normal brown dog at home. For that reason, I shall have to pass on giving these dogs a home. And so the wizard left, and the dog just remained there in the enchanted magical forest. They didn't even bark or sniff ass or anything. They just sat there. The end. That was the worst fucking poem. It was a like fucking the story, about the Thomas. No, it was subverted. That was a no, prose no, poem. Subverted expectations. That, that, yeah, he, so what he Fuck did... that! What he Fuck. did right now, he came into the space... And he put the bodies of the dogs all over the place. That was beautiful. I feel like that was beautiful. I feel like that poem was about me. <laughs> right, because we, we all the dogs the dog or the wizard. We all expect something to happen to us, but in the end, nothing ever does. Nothing happened to the dogs. Uh, why, don't, why don't I read another one, and then Joseph, you can Please. follow up me, okay? It was okay. like infinite, like yes, the old yes. times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It reminded me. It was yeah. a lot like infinite. Infinite jest, yeah. It reminded me a lot of when I first moved to Brooklyn. A lot of similar things. All right, my turn. <laughs> <laughs> this poem is called "I Need Top." <laughs> God. I need top. I need to be sucked. I need to be a reverse balloon. If I don't get top, I will 100% kill myself, and it'll be your fault. So you don't have, so you have to give me it. And if you can't, you have to find me someone who. I need top. I want my head spinning, and I want to see stars. <laughs> I want to freak the fuck out with my nasty little blaster getting hoovered in the next year, <laughs> and I want to go cross-eyed. And then. I want to instantly fall asleep, like a baby in a high chair, with Cheerios stuck to my arm. I want top! I want to yell, OW! In my 1999 Mitsubishi Eclipse, as I get drained like a pool. I need top! And I need it now. All right, I'm going to follow that up with a poem I wrote. It's called, I Need Top 2. Hey, come on now. <laughs> I need some top so fucking bad. I need to go to the emergency room. I jacked off and I nutted and it didn't take. Oh my fucking God, I need top so fucking bad. My little pink nuts are shaking. I'm sorry what I said about your dad. It's just that I don't think he likes me very much. And when I get a sense that someone doesn't like me, I lash out because growing up, my parents were too nice to me, so I don't know how to deal with conflict. Oh my god, I can't even think straight. I need top. I'm crying. I got a demon in me. Get it out! Get it out! I need to get sucked! I need to get sucked by a medical professional. I need anesthesia for a nut extract. I get so jealous of people with dysfunctional families. You're so lucky. At least your family stuff is interesting. I was just so sick of everything being so perfect all the time. Why do I even bother? You don't know what it was like for me. I guess families who have a fridge just for sodas are cursed. I said that I need to get sucked. I want to get my socks sucked off. I'm a nasty little horny, nasty bad man with a crooked purple cock. I'm as horny as Andy Richter's Twitter likes tab. I'm chopping at the mouth. It's time. It's time. It's time. Thank you. That's my poem. That was, so that was fire. I'll be honest. Uh, you're oh, back. Oh, you I think you're back, Joe. Thank you. I feel like that one came straight from the heart. That was the part of your body it was coming from the heart. 
Those, uh, those two poems it sound like he came, it came a, from his nuts. Is what it those two like. poems seem to be having a conversation with each other. One that it, 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 there's some very true, real truths within that conversation about needing things in general. That's it true, might Jeff. be top. It might be something more heartfelt. I'm not entirely sure. Would yeah. you say you were feeling backed up? And maybe it's feeling, coming from a place of being backed up. I felt like I was feeling clogged. Up to up I saw brain. top as a metaphor for dome. Well, um, why don't we got a lot more poems to go through, everybody? <laughs> Who wants to read the next one? I guess I'll go. This one, it's titled Satisfaction. Ma'am, I hope you saw my post. It'd be an honor to have you host. I will be your little rump roast. Shake, bake, flambe, even toast. Premier, prepare me in a way you would enjoy the most. My meat is supple, oh my, my taste tremendous, though I hate to boast. It's enough to watch you enjoy me, floating as a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> that was satisfaction. Uh, that was, yeah. I feel like we've it all was something. There. We've all. Like, like, yeah, I felt like that poem was eating me. No, I felt. Like, hot. Do you want to read the next one? I'm happy to. I'm happy to. Um, this was. This is a current events poem. You know. Uh, I uh, I haven't decided to put this in a chat book yet, but it was just it was something I was feeling. It was something I was thinking. Uh, you know, of course, um, on April Fools, I chartered a jet to go back to the Catskills, um, and I've been just going through a lot, thinking a lot about the Corona crisis, of course, the bodies that it affects, and uh, sort of about that. It's called immunity from capitalism. <laughs> An invisible wall cuts us all down. It does not matter if it's Brooklyn or it's Dinky Town. Mouths of phlegm, that's where it hits them. In many ways, I am the victim. The sickness hits, whether kind or untoward. I had to leave by plane because I got bored. When the body, last body is buried, when the last surface is cleansed, when the last business is closed, when the last day is past, will we remember? Even in Boston, I can hear them say, no more wicked pisses. <clears throat> On Zoom, I was forced to do my second adult bar mitzvah. I don't really understand it, but that's why I liked it. I cannot really. It was just, it was sort of about how, like, I wish that we could all get a flu shot. Yeah. For neoliberal capitalism. If, it's, if you can't understand dream. it, that means it's good. Uh, yeah, for late capitalism. It means it's beautiful. That's what I was saying, Jeffrey. Thank you. I feel like Je that poem, Jeffrey. The poem was about me. And I understand it. It could have, it could have well have been about you or me or any one of us. And that's why I like poetry. Anyone can read it. And see it happen through their own. That eyes. is true. Anyone can read. I think it. I, I can speak for everyone. Which I think I can speak for everyone. Which I do. Where we want to hear what Brule has to bring next. If he yeah, has anything absolutely, else. Absolutely, man. That that was the summation of my life's experiences to this date. Um, that, that was an. You're epic saving it for the Netflix special, huh? Yeah, I, I don't want to compare it to the Epic of Gilgamesh. Um, if someone do. else does, I do, I do want to do it. that. Yes, and Ulysses. And Gilgamesh of... is shit. Yours is better. Oh, th thank Gil you. Gil Straight up. Gilgamesh is kind of like, kind of yikes on some genders. I stuff. have a poem I would like to read. Oh, please. The feckless city sleeps as his weary mind creeps because this man is usually very sad and lonely. But this lonely man has two badass swords, and these swords are also cool guns. He slashes and shoots at the same time, but only when he can hit his target for tears blur. He is the lonely man with two gun blades. That poem is called The Lonely Man with Two Gun Blades. 
I like your style of never saying the title and then the last line turns out to be the title. That poem reminded me of a friend of mine. That can't be possible. It's about me. That poem. <laughs> my poems are completely autobiographical. That's not You're possible. the friend that I was going to say. I'm not, oh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, okay. Maybe that works. Thomas, why don't you read a poem for us? Okay, well, my remaining poems are from a new chat book I'm working on. Um, this one is called Inspiring Inspirations, 23 of the Greatest Goats of All Time of All Time. Uh, when I made the title of that chat book, I thought you got paid by the word for your book title. But it turned out I can't help but notice a theme where you constantly talk about getting paid, that you <laughs> seem to be concerned with money, well, and if your money is good or not. It seems like some of you are kind of hobbyist poets, but this is what I do for a full-time living. I mean, I make like $150 a month doing this. So to me, it's kind of important for the bottom line to, to uh, you know, be in the black, as we say. If it were in the red, that would be bad, because I wouldn't have Read the poem! Okay, this is an ode to one of my great inspirations, and as you might know, I am heavily influenced by Shakespeare. Is this the poem yet? The bard. Yes, this, this is the poem. It's called Ode to the Great Shakespeare and His Astonishing Pen. Oh, to wit, <laughs> if ever there was such a pen as skilled as that of Shakespeare were a poem to have the sonorous sonorities of those of the bard from across the pond. Oh, how those words would drip from the pen. How they would cause tears to drip from the eyeballs like ink from the pen. Oh, how Shakespeare was such a spirited and acerbic fount of wit and wisdom and wonder. Oh, how the bard did write with that pen of his. Keep in mind, when I say the bard, I am of course referring to Shakespeare, the titan of Stratford-upon-Avon, the colossus of the queen's retinue of talented troubadours, which did in times past traipse across the merry fields, meadows, and lake districts of merry old England, blessings God, be upon the queen. Ah, <laughs> for when one hears the words of Shakespeare tickling upon thine ear, one must think of honeydews and hyacinths, and springtime and true love, the way that the words of an accomplished poet often entice one to feel. Oh, but to be alive! Oh, the joys of the written word when Shakespeare doth write those words with his magnificent pen. And alas, my joy of this great bard, heretofore so joyful, has been ended. For you see, and you might not know this, Shakespeare has died. Yes, he was laid to rest, and his pale body lowered into yonder earthen ground, upon the queen's land, among the moors and docks and shipyards and cities of that beautiful country that the bard liked to call Old London Town. <laughs> Magnificent. May I first say that I, I was unaware that Shakespeare was dead, so I'm glad that you brought me this piece of news. I think that was a valuable I feel like public announcement. A lot of people make that mistake, and I just kind of wanted to put some of my inspirations out there in the open so people can check this stuff out. My, I think my that other favorite Thomas, part is when you said, oh, to describe your emotion. Yeah, Thomas kind of used like a, a freshman poet tactic where you just talk as loud as you can. People think it's good. Well, that's what they do on the stage, what? like Shakespeare. You have um, to project. Is, is it okay if I follow up with one more from the same collection no. right now? No. No. No, 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 you no. no. I would you love to hear it, Thomas. You should let it sing, should let it sing Thomas. Thomas, you have, a like Hutt, you have a beautiful soul. You're my only friend in the world right now, Hut. You know that? A lot Let me of just do one more, okay? A lot of very vulnerable people who just said hurry that up I'm and their no, only friend. You can read it as long as you don't describe it. This one is called The Fifth Seinfeld. He described it right away. Oh, when Jerry Seinfeld speaks unto his audience and pontificates as to the nature of airline cuisine and the peculiar ways in which men and women prefer to change the TV channel. Oh, it is as if the heavens above have opened up and bestowed upon network television an angel with whom we may share our mirth. Oh, to be on that couch with young Jerry, having a laugh with pals George Elaine and yes, even boisterous Kramer. Ah, that truly is to be in the presence of divine inspiration. Oh, when that friendly foursome could not get their soup from the Nazi, or when George's fiancée died from the stamps, oh, truly, 
it would seem as if the bard of yore, Shakespeare of Stratford-upon-Avon himself, had inspired the pen of show creators Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David. Oh, to laugh with young Jerry. Oh, to enjoy the antics of George and the gang when they waited in that Chinese restaurant. How I am filled with joy as if the angels on a high had become my friends. But however, therein lies the rub. As the credits do roll, so too does the laughter end. Oh, what I would give to be there on the couch with Jerry and George. What I would give for Elaine to push me, for Kramer to stumble through mine doorway. Only then could I be as happy as the fifth Seinfeld, which I would be, which is the title of this poem. Jerome, why don't you read a poem? I was lighting the candle. Okay, well. <sighs> I could read one if you want, if you're not no. ready. That's fine. That's fine. This poem. This poem is called Brain Tragedy. Picture this. A walking cluster of missteps congealing into perpetuated disconnect. And maybe throw some deep-seated remorse. Is it me? I have puked so much today that a single gust of wind would blow me into the river if I should be so lucky. That'd probably be picture perfect, right? The birds are coming back, I see. Maybe they'll take me out. Is that what you're waiting for, too? You can't seem to get enough of dismantling me with your si silence. What? Have you never seen someone actively heartbreak? Stare all you want. Take a picture. It'll burn quicker. <laughs> I would like to read a poem now. Please. Go right ahead. This one's called, Will Someone Tell Me to Shut the Fuck Up? Hey, are you awake? Are you up? Hey, 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 are you awake? Hello? Oh, hey, baby. I'm sorry. Did I wake you up? I'm just thinking about Mona Lisa's favorite smile and how maybe, just maybe, wasn't even a smile at all. I can't sleep, baby, thinking about how shitty her smile was. Oh, you want to you wanna go back to sleep? Okay, I guess I'll just shut the fuck up. Are you up? Hey, baby, you up? Are you up? Baby, you up? Did you move? Are you sleeping? Oh, hey, sorry, did I wake you? Can I talk to you? How long was your ex-boyfriend's time? How many guys have you slept with? Did you love them? How come the only way you can come with me is uh, is when I pretend that I'm a washing machine? No? Okay. You want to go back to sleep? Okay. No, that's fine. No, I'm sorry. Get up. No, we have to talk right now. The combined length and penis of all your previous sexual partners, it makes mine look like shit, right? Am I competing against your collective cock history? Just tons of cocks connected, pointing outward, just like a blooming onion? Huh? What is it? So I'm crazy, huh? I'm the bad guy? Oh, yeah, I guess I'm the bad guy because I couldn't sleep, huh? Maybe that is what Mona Lisa was smiling about after all. If it's not clear, here's what I believe. I believe that the Mona Lisa painting is a metaphorical a representative of all women in the world, and I am insinuating that... They are smiling because they are thinking about every man that they have ever had sex with. Penis, all together in a collective amorphous sea urchin-like being. I truly believe that this is what women, represented through the famous painting of Mona Lisa, truly think about when they flash that famous Mona Lisa smile. Thank you. That was uh, uh, a, 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 an unobtrusive look into your soul, clearly. And I thank you, because um, I know that we all identify 100% with that poem, 100%. None of us have any dissenting opinions about that poem. I feel like all. I feel like I'm the subject. I didn't listen that to poem. that one because he was mean to me earlier. You are so sensitive that I'm jealous. Let's uh, let's, let's get stay, to the next. Have poem. another poem. Let's stay on focus. Please. I have another poem. If anybody wants to hear it, you could. I would love to hear your poem too. Please read it. I'd even consider begging you for it. It's called. Existential. Oh, okay. 
Am I the man? There we go. Wearing pippins that are gray, a black shirt, black belt, and shorts of tan? Am I the man on this bright summer day? Will I be noticed? Is there a chance that my best friend wants to see me dance? Am I the man? Yes, I'm the man. Wearing pippins that are gray, a black shirt, black belt, and shorts of tan. Yes, I'm the man on this bright summer day. And that's existential. Snaps of Sartre. Stacy and Brule, you guys are, you know, the young bloods. This is great. This is fantastic stuff. I actually don't feel suicidal, <sighs> which I'm not, but. I, uh, uh, I, I have uh, one last I poem. never am suicidal. I just like the theory of it. Please, Hut, go ahead. This is my last poem that I have for you guys today. I wish I could bring more, but unfortunately, there's a lot of feelings to be had out there, and I can't always translate the pen to page. But here it is. Here's two to three. It's called Redacted. Corporations care about you. The flag represents freedom. Say the pledge and we'll all be safe. A red, white, and blue gun? How's that for your fall fashion look? A soldier strips completely naked at the sight of a book. <laughs> we plunder and pillage. We pillaged and took. Who's your captain? Is it Callie or is it Hook? I like to charge the Bastille. Empty my powder. No civility in my revolution, even if you're Kurt Louder. Revolutionary thought disperses like Neo Enhancer in water. I post a picture of my love, and people ask if it's my daughter. How can you wiretap our thoughts? How can you pay overtime for death? Our national heart has a blood clot, and we can't go to see Opeth. One day we'll all end. We'll look at all those in need and say we did it all. We lived through the plots of all the Assassin's Creeds. <laughs> Righteous. Thank you. That was I wonderful. Have... Thank you. Two quick ones if you do not know. No, go ahead. The world turns its back on those scorned by lovers. But deep within the earth, there resides answers in the form of minerals that are turned into cool, badass swords. Big ass, sweet fucking swords that are way too big. This lonely man has two of them and swings them around us in shit. He is a lonely man who wields two dual buster swords. That poem is called The Lonely Man Who Wields Dual Buster Swords. <laughs> <laughs> really? That one couldn't be about you because it looks like you got a little friend there. This is yeah. my demon, and I cannot leave my house because this demon has possessed it. This is the second poem. I don't have a girlfriend, <laughs> <laughs> nor a wife. All I have is a hatred for life. I, I am lonely, Sephiroth. That poem is called The Lonely Sephiroth. <laughs> wow, that was... Wow. Really? That's more of my speed. Really my consistent speed. Really consistent theme you have developed. Those are the only poems I've written in the last seven years. <laughs> have you have been playing any green. video they games recently? No, 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 <laughs> no. I'll read a poem. Okay. This poem is called... Woman Tricker. <laughs> <laughs> Do not trust Joseph Rogan, no relation. <laughs> he is my best friend and he is brilliant. But he is disgusting and he smells like a horse blanket that was put in the washer and left to dry on its own. <laughs> he is the greatest artist I've ever known. But Joseph R Rogan, no relation. He just wants to do that horizontal tango. And he's always barefoot. His feet are completely black on the bottom, and he'll put them on your couch. <laughs> he is the most sensitive soul to exist, and he is lying to you. He eats all the flour with a spoon and rolls around with a stomach ache. 
He usually sleeps in an old refrigerator box with his filthy feet sticking out. In my bedroom. <laughs> because Joseph Rogan, no relation, is afraid to be seen for what he really is. A woman tricker. I deny everything that was stated about me. If that was about me, and I don't think that was, sort of was about you. I, I think, think it was, was a metaphor. powerful for you to speak up about what you've seen in order to get attention like that. Yeah, I, I, think I would like brave. to read the next poem as a response to Jerome. A retort. So that he doesn't paint me as the sexual deviant that I am. This poem is called Fuck Poem. <laughs> this is a fuck poem. You fuck to this poem. You fuck thinking about this poem. Your toes are curling. My toes are curling. Men do that too when they nut, if they are comfortable enough with themselves to allow them to do it. My poems can make women nut. My dick could too, if women hadn't desensitized themselves so much with sex toys that do things I Jesus. can't even compete with. <laughs> Like lasting more than three minutes. This is a fuck poem. This is a fuck. I'm fucking. This is a fucking oh fucking shit. Oh f yuck. I'm going to fucking bust. I still got my socks on and they're black and I'm going to fucking bust. I have busted. Yeah, I have busted. I have fuck. And you fuck. This was a fuck poem. Thank you. Do you get what I was trying to say there? That was a carnal. Yeah, I get it. it I know that next time, if ever, if I ever fuck again, I will definitely put that poem on or read it as we fuck. Beautiful. Who else has another poem? I have a poem. Please read it. This is called 22. Sadness all around me. Except for you. 22. A smile so true. 22. Age is just a number. Marriage is just a state of mind. You. 22. A spitfire. A Chicago comedian. Me. 30-ish, 40-ish. A lonesome joke maker. A comedy show that's skyrocketing. Just for fun. With you. I could share that fun. Please look at your DMs. That's called 22. That was, that was so crazy. It like didn't relate to anything. It was like, I don't know anybody could make that. It was wild. It's a totally matter totally of wild. images and you must decide what it means. It's like infinite jest. It's a lot like infinite jest. I'd like to read infinite another jest. one. If, okay. if I may. Please. <clears throat> this one is called... Rock and roll mama. <laughs> There's one lady for me, and her name is Rock and Roll. Sexy hot mama lady. <laughs> <laughs> With her red hot licks and riffs like lightning. She knows that axe will guide me. Wailing on my hollow body, Les Paul. And wearing my leather jacket. You can say I'm a rocker. Sex and drugs are good, but rock and roll is my true mistress. And she knows how to treat me right. <laughs> because she keeps rocking me all night long. <laughs> the trouble is, I may be singing her blues soon. Because people have been telling me, rock and roll is dead. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Uh, Does the poem kind of inspire rock and roll mama being dead? I'm confused. Amazing. Who else is, has a poem? I have, I have one that I kind of feel I have like one a, more. a dovetail. I have one with more. That one. If I can go. This one is. This one will be my Thomas. last one. If I can go instead no, of Thomas. I, I, I think I'm really going to do my final. I really would love to go instead of Thomas. I Look, this is what happens it. when I try to assert myself. Everyone just tends to step all over me. Thomas, if you read this last <sighs> poem, will you promise to never write another poem? <laughs> um, I, I promise to, to do that. That you said. Why are you showing us your fingers? I'm. That promise was sincere. I'm just letting you know. Get those out of. Get those out of. Known as the poet's grip. <laughs> can I? Can I read my poem? Read it. This one is called Mary Jane's Temptation. 
Oh my fucking god. Her name is Mary Jane, and she gets me very high. <laughs> <laughs> she also she also likes to smoke weed. <laughs> at parties. What? At parties, Mary Jane says to me, puff puff pass, take another hit of this big blunt. I long for the caress of her lips, but I fear the hand-rolled cylinder of sticky, icky, purple OG she passes me. I yearn for her touch, but this weed would have me gone if I got gone off of it. So I said to her, no thanks, none for me. I don't like the taste. It makes me feel like my heart is pounding, and I forgot what everyone said to me. Give me a nice Budweiser beer, please. Extra cold. Please make sure it is served at the lowest temperature legally allowed by law. Thank you very much. (laughs) Midway through that, I forgot who I was talking to and I forgot what I was saying and who was talking to me and everything. It turned out I was already high from a brownie I ate that I thought was normal, but it turned out to be one of the weed ones. Mary Jane stopped listening to me at some point in the beer rant. I think she went home with some guy who was high on drugs. It was the worst heartbreak I ever experienced, but I let that emotional pain be my motivation and gain. Goodbye, Mary Jane. The way you tried to pass me the blunt that one time made me so high, it was almost as if I had smoked it. And now I am high on your inspiration. Fuck off. I fucking hate. That I would hate Thomas. That was I would almost say that poem Thomas. came from the earth itself. That was... Yeah, if you wanted to roll that poem up and smoke it, man, God wants us to do it. It's completely... Might natural. I say that it's, uh, it's, it's okay because it comes from the earth. Absolutely. I wish I could have given that poem to Bob Marley so he could have lived. Why? Because it would have uh, prevented whatever illness he died of. I don't follow. Uh, the stuff We're coming up on time, and you gotta get these poems out. Who's yeah, poems? no, you guys, you guys got some. I still poems. have a few poems. I go, let's go, Joe. Come on. I have one I could read. Okay, go ahead and read, Stacy. Okay. This poem is called "Hey Everybody." Hey everybody. Today, some really disgusting things have been publicly exposed about past actions of mine. You can search Stacy Grinnell on Twitter to find the posts that I'm aware of at this time. I'm sorry to everyone who is disappointed in me. I do not deny or defend what I did. I respect everyone's decision to cut ties with me. My intentions or my apologies cannot change the amount of harm done. And ultimately, I think it's right that I be exposed for it. Again, I'm so sorry. That was really creative. That's called that apology. Was, hey, I, everybody. I, I felt like that could have been about any of us. It was amazing. Yeah, I felt like, really like you were saying, that I feel like that was about me. Now I feel like that was about me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All my poems are about me. Oh, That's word. Good. I'd like to read a poem. Please. This is called She's Electable If You Vote For Her. <laughs> <laughs> the sun is going to set on straight white men. So you better hurry up and become bisexual. <laughs> this world wasn't good enough for Max Bemis. If only we all felt what he felt. Is there anything braver than a white man saying a white woman can be president? Is there anything braver than being rude and calling it radical honesty? My medication for bipolar disorder is your love. Just fix me. I don't want to be another old white man that says stuff like women shouldn't be allowed to fight in Yemen. I want to say stuff like that women should get paid the exact same as men, but only in Marvel films. I want young black girls to grow up and truly believe that maybe, just maybe, one day they can be the head of their own landlord real estate management group specializing in low-income housing. A better world is possible, and I will make sure of it. I'm going to wait until I'm married to a woman and have three kids, and then I'm going to tell everyone, oh yeah, I've been bisexual the whole time. On election day, I'm going to the polls, and I'm going to look at the Republican nominee for president, and I'm going to scratch out Donald Trump's name. And I'm going to write Elizabeth Warren over Donald Trump's name. (laughs) And then I'm going to vote for Donald Trump. And all the women of the world, all of the ones who make at least $75,000 a year, will gather around me and thank me, either with their words or whatever else they think of that they might wish to thank me with, which is their choice as a woman. Thank you. It's beautiful. That was brave. That was wonderful. I don't like that political shit, but that wasn't bad. That was real, and I felt like that. I have was a about poem. Me. I have a poem here I th- called "I think this Power be, of Pleasure." I think this will be our last one. Well, uh, may I do one last one after him? Then yes, you can do one more. Okay, thank you. This is called "Tower of Pleasure." Install me, put me in your rig, and let me heat up. 
I do not require much. I have red, green, and blue LED lights. I have 16 gigabytes video RAM. Isn't that enough? Do not upgrade for me. I will promise to be quiet. Please install me and let me show you what I can do. I may be AMD, but I am kind, and I don't cost too much. And another thing, I love you. I love you! I'm worrying up just thinking of being in there. Install me, and I will not overheat. I wish I could shadow play clip that. Um, this poem, I guess this will be the last one, Stacy. Um, this one is kind of my masterpiece, so I don't want to say any more. This poem is called Tao Lin. <laughs> Remember in the year 2007 when everybody became a total pussy at the exact same time? <laughs> that was the best day of my life. Everybody developed pussy tendencies, so the only way to get noticed was to be as big a pussy as possible. It was a beautiful race to the bottom, and Altlit was born. Imagine a whole genre of new literature written by men who are allergic to condoms. <laughs> a whole genre of literature where the authors are all sexual demons, men so horny that they make Tex Avery's famous wolf look like Tex Avery's famous asexual porky pig. Just imagine a literary collective where the only thing that they actually had in common stylistically were consistent and reliable accounts stating that they had committed <laughs> sex crimes. They would just talk to a girl over Gchat for two years and then post the transcripts as a book and the girl that he had been talking to the whole time would get none of the money. These were my salad days, Halcyon, barefoot in the grove of pleasure. I would just go online and post stuff like, you know what? Fuck your feelings, but fuck my feelings too. And just like that, the Guardian wanted to interview me. But now it's 2020. My podcast about revolutionary sadness is 89 listens. The only women that DM me anymore are over 30, and it's disgusting. Let's face it. I failed. I'm a failure. No one has bought a zine in 15 years. In 2007, everyone agreed that zines were not only authentic, but they were relevant. I want to go back. I need to go. I cannot be 32. My personality literally cannot handle the concept of not being young. I have to. I have to. I have to. I must be a baby again. Thank you. Moving. Powerful. Wonderful. Incredible. You just beautiful. We'll, we'll just close this out now. I'd like to... Um, I'd like to thank everyone for being here, for watching, for thinking that we're probably fucking losers and making fun of us. Probably the majority of the people watching or whatever. I don't, I don't fucking I have care. A, I don't yeah, care. <sighs> I have a quote. I have a quote from Che Guevara that might help you. Thank you. Can you please read it to me? If I get my stupid ass kicked a thousand times, but I inspire one child to become a hero, then it didn't hurt. I think he said that was either him or like uh, Brezhnev, somebody, somebody said it. Well, I let's close this up. I think it's true of him. I have suddenly caught a powerful malaise and I'm going to go take my shirt off and lay down on my porch. I just want to say to the viewers that if they enjoyed what they saw at Boost House here, they can check out my new poetry podcast, Chatbook Trap House. First episode's coming soon. I was seriously waiting for you to make that joke for so fucking long, dude. Right, I knew you would do it. It was like the lowest hanging fruit in Charles. Charles. Can't stand Charles. It. He can't fucking deal. I was like, I can't believe he fucking waited over. so long. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for donating. <laughs>